birds are chirping. They know Frankie's here. Birds have landed on the patio, and so have the critters. They've landed in your backyard, your gardens, and Frankie's here to zap those bugs. Frankie, yeah. can I just say this is the first segment that I get to do in three months, and it's with you. This in, is amazing. In this way, we, we've been in doing them all through Skype and through other things digitally. Yes. Um, and I've been doing that as well. On the weekends, I do Facebook Lives on uh, at Ask Frankie Flowers on uh, Facebook. And with that, lots of questions about bugs right now. You know, some of the common bugs we're seeing, we have some pictures, okay. is the, uh, the Japanese beetle. So if you're looking at your garden right now and you're seeing some damage, some holes in some of the leaves of some of your plants, it could indeed be that Japanese oh, yeah. beetle. And you can see that Japanese beetle can come into an area and very quickly get rid of everything. And that is the adult stage of what's called a grub. So a grub is what we find in our lawn. Stephanie was just asking me about this. She said that her mom was trying to find something that she can put on her lawn to take care of the grubs, to take care of the beetles. Right. And that's something that's called grub be gone. There's okay. also nematodes that you can use as well. Uh, this is Bacillus thurgentis. So it's actually a bacteria. It's totally safe. And you apply it down, then you water it in. And as you water it in, it infects the grub and then takes care of the grub and will minimize the amount of Japanese beetles you have. If you have Japanese beetles on your property, you can also go get a trap. It's a Japanese beetle trap. Okay. It has pheromones in it, so it attracts the beetles. The key is put it away from the plants you want to keep the beetles away from because it'll attract beetles from the entire the area. area. I often joke, go put on your neighbor's uh, area oh, to no. trap the beetles there. Oh, oh so no. Th that's one of the common bugs that we're seeing out there as well. Another thing that you're seeing right now on some of your cabbage types of plants, like you love kale, oh, even yeah. Brussels sprouts, cauliflower, all those, is cabbage worms. And sometimes you're seeing those where you're getting holes into some of those edibles, and people are growing edibles at such a, an incredible rate oh, right now. Oh, there it is. It looks innocent enough, but it does damage the yes. little green worm. Yeah, so if you see a white moth flying around and then all of a sudden you have holes, mm. that's a cabbage Work. Simple thing that you can do is a floating row cover. So a bed sheet over that little garden space that still allows for uh, 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 filtered Here. light to go through. What happens is the moss can't go and land, and that's what's called a floating row cover. So take a look at floating row covers, and they can work out really well for you. Okay. Aphids. So this is the thing. People walk out into the garden space, and if you walk around and you see an insect, what do you do when you see an insect? Those little wee things? Yeah. You kill it. But, so what's the first thing you can do? If you see aphids on your plants, first thing you can do is take your hose with a jet spray on it, wash them off. Okay. Next thing, in your, in your defense, you know the yeah. next thing that you have for defense? You burn the garden down, no I'm kidding. No, you what? have the fingers, the pick and the squish. Oh yeah, ew. Right, you can also squish no. the eggs. Then what you can do is go and do an insecticidal soap, if okay. you want to do an insecticidal soap. <laughs> Another thing that's an alternative to an insecticidal soap is bug be gone, but you can also make your own home insecticidal soap by using a liquid dish, dish soap that's out there. So it's like half dish detergent, half water? Is that well, easy? You're doing a, what I would really recommend, oh. usually it's about a teaspoon that you're doing to one liter of water. Oh. Anytime that you're applying this, this is more prevention than reaction. Okay. Uh, but you want to test an area first before you go and apply. Okay. Key is whenever you're treating any plant, do it when it's the earlier part of the day, now would be perfect, or the later part of the day, never in the hot sun. Why? If you, if, if you do it in the hot sun, you'll burn the plants overall. Okay. okay. Um, another bug, bug that we want to talk about is something that you have in your front, and you're asking Snails. me. Snails. Yes. Uh, where'd they come from? And somebody wrote on Twitter. She said they could eat your whole garden or your plant. Is that right? True. Yeah. Snails. Slugs. They're so cute. They're hermaphrodites, meaning they have male and female parts, so they don't even need a relationship to breed. They just go, 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 they don't go. Need anybody. They love a garden that's warm and wet. You want to cut down sn uh, slugs, snails? that is, in snail populations? You want to water in the morning because you want your gardens to be dry during uh -huh. the evening months. A wet, dark garden is where you're going to breed a lot of insects. But what do I do about it? I don't want to kill it. There so are, it's just going to eat my plant. You're going to have to control. So control, what you can do is there is a slug and snail bait that you can use. The other thing, if you want to just get it away from your plants, snails and slugs will never walk across copper. Okay. Because copper has a charge on it. So you could either get some old pennies that were made from copper, if you can find it, and put that around your plant, because the snails won't walk across, oh, yeah? or you can even purchase copper tape. Okay. And by putting that around the base, you can also prevent them from going on. Diatomaceous earth, crushed eggshells around the base are all things you can do What if I drop it off at a local park? Pack up my snails in a pail? And take it, yes, you, you could do that. Okay, take them in my you, car, go. You could do to that go. for okay. sure. Uh, the red lily beetle. Yeah. This is another beetle that you're seeing on Asiatic beetles. And with the Asiatic oh. beetles, 
they're telling us that we should separate yeah, each other a little bit more. Yeah, we got too close. See, we yeah. forgot. Uh, because we're like getting so we're into so this. Into it. I know, I'm getting too excited. This thing looks like a villain in a horror film. What is that beetle, Frank? So it's a red lily beetle. Best thing you can do, look to the back side of the leaves if you have it. Back side of the leaves, you're going to see a little reddish to brown bump. Take your finger, run it across, just squish those up. Work the soil yeah. underneath. Rub the gone actually works for some of the red lily beetles as well. And then pick and squish. A reminder, beetles on a cool morning will be dormant on your plants. They'll actually be sleeping. Uh -huh. So you can put a sheet around the base of your plants. Just shake the plant. All the beetles will fall in. Collect it in the sheet. Throw it out. Now get this. Thanks to you, I put cayenne pepper. It looks like a bit of a crime scene all over the back. Yep. Raccoons are out of there. Gonzo, we won this round. This round until they get adapted to that. Sometimes oh. you got to change things up. We'll talk more about that on another day of oh. Frankie Flowers. Okay, Frankie, thank you. He's here to help us all, everybody. Bugs be gone. We'll be back with more BT right after this. So the raccoons, it's only round one. We see if they get used to spicy food. <laughs> Don't we all? <laughs> yeah. But they eat the smell.